What's up guys, welcome back to Capsule Monster Coliseum. I want, to, I want my new opening catchphrase whenever I start a video to be a what's up cunts and just like just say it really casually and just like no malice. Just what's up cunts, it's Nick here with another video. <laughs> just how's everyone doing today? I don't think I can pull it off though. Alright, here we are. So uh, there was a slight audio dis desync issue last time. This happens when I reset the game um, in the emulator. Or in the PS, I'm sorry, in the PS3, what happens is this menu is super fucking wonky when it comes to recording. And if I reset the game, it'll like actually shut down the system for a second, which means that for a split second it stops recording the gameplay and then it starts recording. But my audio keeps going, so I skip ahead a little bit. So, my bad for that. <clears throat> I didn't. I don't, I don't even think about it when it happens because it's just it's it's such a rare occurrence. But I do feel bad for it. So. My apologies. So we got Taya, and that's it. I always forget that they don't let you choose. I think maybe it's the next stage they let you choose what order you fight. Maybe they don't at all. We're fighting Taya, who is a very short skirt here. Or Anzu, if you've read the manga instead. I remember having trouble with her, for whatever reason. Um, yeah, I'm not really that... I haven't had a lot of good luck here. I do really like this arena. It's... For, I mean... Part of me thinks they designed all these levels without Yu-Gi-Oh in mind, because someone brought up a good point in the comments of the last part. They said, man, why wasn't Duke Devlin's um, arena dungeon dice monster theme? I was like, it's a good point, but I mean, no. none of these are themed to their duelist. So I feel like they were ripped from a different game, which is fine. I mean, it's not like a Digimon World 4 situation where it's like half and half. This seems like it's just the arenas that were ripped from somewhere else. Like, there's no Yu-Gi-Oh theme in the arenas, as far as I know. Um... But I mean, it's it's all Yu-Gi-Oh stuff. Damn. I I always wanted to duel against you to see how I would do. Well, we're not dueling. You know, we're playing Capsule Monster Coliseum. So fucking get your shit together, Taya. This is actual duel monsters. I would fucking destroy you. Ah, but don't expect me to take it easy on you, Taya. Of course not. I'll never forgive you if you treat me with kitty gloves. Okay, let's do. Our difference here in stance tells me that one of us is taking this a little bit more seriously. Uh, also, another thing um, someone brought up in the Discord, um, which you should join if you're like, hey, I want to talk Yu-Gi-Oh, or I want to talk this, and hey, I want to yeah, watch and read the comments, stuff like that. Um, join the Discord, it's in the description. But um, someone brought up a good point, which was, um, oh, why did I do attack first? I should have done attack second. Uh, you only get monsters that you destroy by battle, so if I just destroy their symbol, even though it gives you um, more XP, I think that's what it was. Yeah, it gives the monster who destroys it a lot more XP. You will miss out on any monsters um, that you don't get that way, so should be avoided. Uh, well, not avoided. Like if I only have if they only have one shit monster left, then I don't mind it. I don't mind it, but that's fine. He's level two already, so I don't have to worry about him. One Fire Reaper is down. I can now we just get another one. Okay. Which of you is the one that I was working with? Um, it's ca capability? Is that what it said? XP 1. Okay, so he's almost leveled up. Get that one. Uh, which one? These Karibos. Right, that one's got 45. Okay, we'll go with this one. And then let's get Larva Moth out, obviously. Um... The rest, I don't really give a shit. I'll do f these two. I think I have room for one small one left. Uh, we have Psychic Kappa. Oh, wow, he's almost leveled up. How did he get so much XP? Um, might as well. The issue with Psychic Kappa is they have to get him to like level fucking five or something. Actually, do I have any more dark monsters? I might just, this sounds dumb, but I might just get another Kribo. Yeah, Kribo's pretty reliable in this game, so I'll go with that. I have six. You're allowed a maximum of seven I can deploy in this one, but all of their cost is too high, sadly. Uh, someone else also pointed out that the head of Exodia doesn't appear until you get the other four limbs, which I knew. I mean, it's not really an issue. I think once you get the fourth one, you're, you're allowed to get Exodia Prime, so to speak. Um, the issue is leveling all four of them up, or all five of them up to level two. It's easy in the beginning when you get like one or two at a time, but gets real fucking annoying after that. Uh, oh god, hold on. Can I auto place? I don't want to do this. Auto placement. Can you just place it for me? I don't... 
they really not going to let me auto place? There we go. Okay. I don't. I really don't give a shit. <laughs> yes, there's strategical value to be had in placing it in certain spots, but I don't care. I just can't. It takes too long. It's not worth it. <clears throat> So my goal is to beat three duelists in this one, but I might only get two, because there's once you beat the fifth duelist, a new area opens up and they also add more monsters it's to the shop, to so might have to do a little bit of deck editing. Alright. Let's get Larva Month up ASAP. Uh, knowing Taya, she'll be able to summon all our monsters first turn because she cheats. Using this area is pretty cool. Um gotta get the Karibo bros out there. Karibo's Surprisingly good in this, in that he has really long range and he also has really long attack. Yeah, I'm trying to guess what hers are. I know three of those are Petite, hmm. or what should it's Petite I move Angel, next? I think. God, I'm having fucking anxiety or Vietnam flashbacks to, um, to Cyber Petite Angel. You know, all the Cyber Angel decks and Duel Links right now. It's not fun. Oh, they have Water too. Not summon a single one of their light monsters, which is strange. Alright, so 300 is the max AP, it looks like. I, okay, let's just start moving forward. I didn't choose that camera angle, but I'll take it. It's actually helpful. Now, Karibo's movement sucks, but the fact that he can attack within those, those zones makes him more versatile than you would think. Ah, oh, shit. Oh, I want to keep moving up. I hate when I accidentally gimp, my, gimp myself. Fire Reaper at the back kind of sucks. Um, I've yet to really find a... There's a couple, but in the beginning, there's not really any duelists where you have to, like, guard your symbol against. None of them have, like, really high uh, movements, so... It's not that much of an issue. Also, Tay has a water symbol, which feels weird to me. I feel like she should have a light symbol. Also, she only has one water monster. Yeah, Happy Angel, that's what this one is. I hate this card. I hate all these weird angels. And that one's Skull Angel, I think. Which is not going to let her draw two cards, I promise. Why are they all moving that way? Are they trying to get away from the car or something? I don't, I don't really understand what the plan was there. Alright. Well, it looks like I have to start moving this way. I think I might start to... I might have a chance to get an attack. Oh, wow. I actually got blocked by this fucking telephone pole. Uh, it looks like I'll probably be able to get an attack in next turn, maybe. All goes according to plan. We'll see. We'll depend on how things even out. Yeah, Pharaoh Imp has okay attack. He has more attack spots, I think, which is nice, but it's just harder to get them in the spot. Okay. For now, we're doing okay. I still like Fire Reaper the most. I like the standard, like, you can move two and you can attack in those same two spaces. I find it easier to aim with those. There's some later on where they can pretty much attack, move anywhere and attack anywhere. Kind of like how the symbol can move in various places. Oh, wow. Happy fuck moves really far. That looks like four spots, actually. I wasn't really expecting that. The good news is I'm about, about to get some fucking attacks in. Oh, my throat just got really dry. First up, hoist up. Oh wow, I forgot they're really weak against the uh, light monsters. Let's see what Larva Mon can do. Okay. <clears throat> How much damage can I do to this? 96 plus 50, whatever. It's not enough. They have too much HP. Shit. Can Feral Imp move there? Yeah, but he won't get an attack in. She has these light monsters, and they're strong against my type of, um, monsters. I might just have the Karibo Burrows, uh, kind of get the fuck out of here. If I move there, then Happy Whatever will be able to... Happy Lover, is that what it's called? Yeah. If I move here, they'll be able to move in and go for the attack. Let me look at their attack. 97, which boosted against Karibo, will probably do some decent damage. So I'll move here, and they actually can't touch him. And then, also, here, I don't think they can touch him. Seems tricky, but I gotta do it right now. Uh, I don't like putting Larva Moth so out in the open. 
I don't think they'll go for him. I think they'll try it. Oh, I didn't even realize that. they can still attack that Kariba just by moving forward. I don't like leaving Larvamoth so exposed. Oof. But, um, I feel like I kind of have to. Because, I, I mean, I, I assume they'll go for Kariba, but what do I know? This AI doesn't follow the rules. I mean, screw the rules. It's got... Uh, I got it. Screw the rules. I've got money. You got, got the reference? Ah, ah. Um, so I feel like there's a lot of dead air in these videos. I thought uh, I could do one of two things. I could start telling stories and just kind of like filling it with, you know, shit that I've done or what's happened. And that is how I used to do the old Digimon parts. Like I would just kind of fill the air with something. Oh, yeah, this is... I'm alright. Didn't know as bad as I thought it was going to be. Um, so I thought I would go and tell a story from long, long ago. Also, that career was dead rip. Um, when I was in high school, I think I've told this story before, but it's been a few years since I brought it up, I think. Uh, when I was in high school, I one day just went on Facebook. I think it was in sophomore or freshman year. And, um, you're better, you're better than I thought. It's such a backhand compliment. Um, so I was in freshman or sophomore year, and I literally just got on Facebook. And I, was, and I just like was staring at the status screen, praying that I could make a status that make make people like me, and that we get comments and likes and all that. And I'd be like, oh, I need this. I need that rush. Social media. Urgh. And um, what I so what I came up with is not a good. It's SPA. Soothing Wood helps one monster with an effective range recover 80 PP. What the hell is this? It can recover HP? I've never seen that before. Interesting. So I think if I move back one, I'll um, be able to kill Happy Lover. There's no happy here. Only pain. Um, so I was, what I came up with was short, simple, to the point. Uh, all I said was, just got back from the hospital. And just, that was it. Just, just got back from the hospital. And I just sat there, and I waited. And I saw people comment fairly quickly. And, um, people were questioning it, obviously. Like, oh my gosh, Nick, what happened? Are you okay? Etc. And I just, I just, I saw them. I think... By the time I responded, it was about like nine comments or something like that, and it was about 20, I waited, I just sat there and waited for 20 minutes, and then I was like, yeah, I, um, yeah guys, it's pretty bad. I, uh, I, <laughs> I uh, accidentally severely maimed one of my hands, and I uh, almost cut one, uh, some of my fingers off, and they were like, what? And I was like, yeah, I gotta wear like a... You know, I've got bandages on it, bandages and everything on it, and I'm just probably gonna wear a glove tomorrow, just so nobody can see it. And obviously, even high school age, they reacted the way that most people should probably have reacted to that story, which was bullshit. Um, and I said, no, no, no it's true. Um, you know, so what happened was I went, you know, I was, uh, I left something in my mom's car. So I went outside, or I went to grab it, the door was locked, I came back inside. I went to grab the keys, and um, the the keys, that we the way we hang our keys is we put them um, over the sink. I don't know why. They're like close to the sink in the kitchen. And I went to grab them, and it uh, it fell, you know, it just fell down. And I tried to grab it, but it didn't, I missed it, and it went straight into the drain. And, um, yeah. So... I tried grabbing it for like, you know, a couple of minutes. I couldn't really grab it. I couldn't really get it. And so, you know, like while I'm still reaching down, I went and grabbed, or I went to hit the light switch. And some of you at this point are going to be ahead of me and you're going to figure out what exactly the problem is. Hold on, wait, what's this? Is this going to increase the darkness in the field? After Karibo and Feral Imp are already dead. That seems unfair. Also, 
Can you imagine living in a town and a clock goes off and all of a sudden everyone's forced to turn their lights off? Also, snow does not come on command like that. As someone who lives in the north, trust me, snow does not work like that. I think it did change a lot of these spots to dark. Yeah, it did. That's cool. Okay. So, still trying to level up Petite Moth. It's only level 1, but this should change things a little bit. I still can't even get... Oh, I can get over here. I remember damaging this one, but did I... Not enough. I didn't damage it, I guess. Okay, let's do this. I want to use Fire Reaper to attack those Petite Moths. Because that'll get some good damage, but at the same time... Ooh, yes. Let's get that damage. Probably land the kill with um Petite Moth here. Oh, that looked painful. What is that face? Oh, anime. Anime should be banned. Sign my, sign my petition, end all anime. Oh, so. So I said I, I was reaching down and I went to hit the light switch to try and get a better view. Now, I don't know if you guys have ever had a garbage disposal, but the way they work is there's a just a little switch on the wall, usually right next to a light. And the reason I came up with this story is that, A, I'm a psycho, and I like lying. Uh, lying is fun to me. I enjoy it very much. And um, so, A, that, so that was part of it. And B, it was, um, I, I'm trying to think. I was, um, actually, before I do anything, is there any wood on this field? I don't think so, but, oh, wait, hold on. No. I think there's wood in the next field, though, so I might be able to do this. Uh, but I think it might be only 20. I think I need 30 for it. Um, so I can level up uh, Larva Moth. Anyway, um, so I... I'm still creepy, I didn't even realize. So, uh, I've done that before, where I've just tried to, like, turn on the garbage disposal, and all of a sudden... Or I turn on the uh, light, and I hit the garbage disposal, and it's just a really grinding noise, especially when there's nothing in it. So you go to turn it on, it's just like, it's just like, no, all right, I'm sorry, I made a mistake, uh, don't go off like that. Um, so I realized it's a pretty easy mistake to make, it's just a series of, you know, dumb, unfortunate incidents. So I said that, and then people were like, bullshit and all that, and it's like, aha, uh -huh, okay, Nick, you're lying, oh, well, whatever. And, uh, so the next morning, I went and found a winter glove, I think it was like, April, or... Uh, I think it was, I think it was either like April or it was like, um, uh, like October or something, like way before, or it was like a time way, either way before or way after it was except for where I went to glove. And I covered my hand. And, uh, that was, that was my fucking plan. And I did that, uh, all day. So I went in and people were like, oh my god. And they were like, Nick, you're bullshit. But I just went with like the most, I just had the most solemn face on the entire day. Which is like, I know, you know, laugh it up, it just, it really happens, and I feel, you know, it, it just, it sucks, but that's just how it goes. Oh, fuck this car. That's bullshit. That's why he moved with such, that just no fear in his eyes. I can't hit him from here. He's in a really annoying spot. Fuck Skalindel. Luckily my Karibo's not dead yet, so I can get an attack on this, kill this one. Karibo will probably take a suicide here, where he'll probably be killed next turn, but f at this particular moment, I'm in the lead. I don't know how long that will last. Ugh, this sucks. I hate the movement on this. Alright, let's get... I'm tired of them attacking my monsters over here, so let's move that over there. Move him here... I think Petite Moth can attack me if he moves there. So I might as well just do this. Just so, actually, let me do this. This, this seems fine. Okay. Um, and I can still move my symbol, but I don't really care. So, um, yeah, I went in the next day. Of course, my, my friends were like, oh, this bullshit. And blah, blah, blah. And I just, but I just I acted the shit out of it, being honest. I don't normally praise my acting efforts. I'm not a terrific actor. I think I'm okay at it. I'm passable. I'm not, like, Oscar-worthy, but I can usually get the job done. And, um, yeah, I, was just, I just went in and I was, like, I just all day. I was just really solemn. I repeated that same story, uh, like, a hundred times. And, um, yeah, I think oh, probably 95% of people believe me. It was a mixture of, A, like, 
I sold the shit out of it. And B, why would you lie about something like that? Why would you lie that you almost cut three of your fingers off? So what I said was that I didn't cut the fingers off, but I just, like, I could see bone, like, the razor really got my... It was my three, like, middle fingers on my right hand, so it, was, it wasn't the thumb or the pinky. It was, like, the three main ones. And, um, yeah, that was the story I went with. And, again, people are just like, why wouldn't we believe him? And, uh, I convinced nigh everyone that, um, that I had done that. And, uh, <laughs> it was just it was so... I'm not proud of this. It's just It sounds really pathetic to me now. And that's why I'm laughing. Um, so, uh, everyone pretty much believed me. I think the biggest parts of the day, the hardest parts, were, you know, English class, because we had a lot of writing. I'm left-handed, though, so I could, like, I could get away with writing, but I couldn't really, like, hold the paper down properly. Because I just didn't move my arm all day. Like, I was just, like, I tried to hold my hand in position as much as possible. In the glove. Never took the glove off the entire day. And it was warm as hell, because it's a winter glove. And, um... Yeah, so I kept doing... I just kept doing that, and, um... Then after that, I had guitar class. That was my long block, so that was for an hour and a half. And, uh, or an hour and 15 minutes, whatever it is. And, um... I just basically sat there, because I play guitar right-handed, so it was just kind of like... Just do, 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 do Just trying to kill time. Just trying to wait. And, um... And then at the end of the day, I had typing. Not, no, I didn't have typing. I think that was when I think it was class, and it was, I had to type out, um, you know, we were typing up an essay, and I had to, like, sort of type with one hand, <laughs> and my professor, or I say professor, my teacher, uh, Mr. Beatty, who was, I don't know if he was openly gay, but he was gay, uh, just looked at me like, tis, tis, Nicholas. He used to say tis, tis, go loud, and he had a very, very, like, I, I don't mean to be offended, the stereotypical gay voice, which is fine. Uh, but he just absolutely, one of my favorite professors, and he just kind of looked at me like, another one of your stunts. And I was just like, yep, that's, this is my plan for the day. This is what I'm doing today. Um, so, uh, I did that, and then, I'm trying to think of what else. I'll probably grab the Scalendula, to be honest. The Scalendula was doing work. So, uh, next day, uh, I made it through the day. Most people believe me, because make sure of me being an amazing actor, and nobody really knowing why someone would lie about something like that. And I um, make it through that day, and then the next day I just walk in and I'm like, no, nope, just I just I was lying. Didn't even try to hide it. Was just straight up like, yeah, I lied. Um, just, just thought it'd be funny. And uh, oh no, I'm sorry. So it, it gets, this is actually how it works. This I forgot the biggest part. Um, when I made that lie, uh, the first day, by, like, second period, people, like, I didn't even have class with, and teachers I'd never had, were getting told about it. Like, people were like, yeah, one of the kids, it just, he cut, he cut off three of his fingers. And you know the way it works, like, the way fucking game of telephone that it is? That people just kept exaggerating the story worse and worse. And, um, it's just, it's so dumb. I was just like, it just got so out of hand so quickly. And I was just like, um, like people I hadn't met or people I didn't know personally were like talking about it. And, uh, professors I had had in the past were now like, you know, oh God. And nobody like tried to check in on me or anything. And, um, so yeah, the next day I was just like, you know, oh, I made it up. And then people were like, you fucking asshole. Or, you fucking idiot. It's like, why wouldn't we believe you? I'm like, I don't know. Just, and, um, I was one friend and it's, if you've watched the Yu-Gi-Oh! videos, the Legacy of the Duelist videos, me vs. Carlos, uh, which, by the way, fucking watch those videos. It is some of the best interactions between me and Carlos on this channel. And um, Carlos tells a story about a girl who pretended to be his girlfriend um, to, it's a friend of ours, and um, to like stave off an ex-girlfriend. And her name was Andrea, and Andrea um, <laughs> was one of the only people who, when she heard it, she was just like, <laughs> That's hilarious! And just fucking laughed her ass off. It's like, I can't believe you would do something like that. And I can't believe everyone believed you. And I was like, right? And, uh, yeah. People did not take it well. So there were, there were a bunch of people who were like, eh, I fucking knew you were making it up. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I mean, I could very clearly tell that you, you couldn't. Like, that you, that you absolutely believe me. Like, don't lie to you and me. Don't lie to yourself here. And then, um... There were people who were just like, that's fucked up, man. You really shouldn't lie about stuff like that. And I was like, 
yeah, probably shouldn't. And then, um, <laughs> and then, I'm trying to think of how to put this, how to phrase this correctly. So, I, and then I got pulled into a classroom. Like, I was walking through the hall. I can't remember if it was on my way to the night next class, if I was walking during a class, like, to the bathroom or something. And uh, a teacher I had, uh, or I had had, like, for, like, I want to say, like, half a year. For whatever reason, I got pulled out of her class. It wasn't, like, misconduct or anything. I wasn't, like, you know, fuck the teacher, like, fucking throwing apples everywhere. I don't know. What do kids do to get kicked out of classes? Fucking just, I wasn't, like, masturbating in the middle of class or anything. I don't think that's the reaction I should have gotten, or the reason people get kicked out I should have gone for. But anyway, um, for whatever reason, uh, I stopped taking her class, and um, she... So, like, I, I knew her, but I didn't really, like, take a full class with her or anything. And she, um, she pulled me aside and she gave me this entire lecture where it's like, you know, you need help. You really, you really shouldn't be lying about things like that. That's, that's very dangerous and very destructive. Um, uh, you know, people were actually worried about you and everything like that. And it's just, it's cry for attention and you really need to sort that out. Uh, I don't know why you felt the need to do something like that, but I was wrong. And don't get me wrong, the word she was saying made sense but the way she was saying them was really shitty like she was being really oh uh, now it's a battle of who can attack the symbol first oh <laughs> this is not the fight i wanted to happen here uh oh uh oh i'm gonna have to move behind this uh this light post <laughs> this is not how i thought this would go i thought uh root water would go after me um, I th shit. Um, it was just like, she just like, she was just being really, really preachy about it, and it's like, she wasn't using the tone I was using, she was being a lot more like, like, you know, you fucked up here. And I was just like, I really don't think it was that bad. Like, it was stupid, and, like, messed up, but it wasn't like, I threatened to, like, bomb the school or anything. And, um, she, yeah, she just got on her high horse and stuff like that, I never liked the way she reacted to it. And, um... Yeah, so that happened, and then that left me like a really sour taste in my mouth. And then after that, I um, I just kind of pretend like nothing happened. And I thought it was really funny, and I still think it was a really good story that I told terribly because I was trying to play Capsule Monsters in between. But um, the issue I had with it is that every fucking person, because so I work at a convenience store in my hometown, um, still to this day. And the issue I have is that every fucking person in the world that went to our high school, whenever they're drunk and whenever they're coming in, they just like have nothing to fucking talk about. They always come in and because they, because you know, I don't really know them that well and they're like trying to make small talk, they always go back to the same thing. It's like, do you remember that time in high school, brah, when you pretend you, you cut off your fingers or your hand or something? And I'm just like, yeah, I was there. I kind of remember that. It would be weird if I forgot something like that, wouldn't it? And they're just like, oh man, that was fucked up. I totally believed you back then. People who said they didn't believe me were now saying they believe they believe me. Which is why I know they're all full of shit. And, um, I'm a little salty still. But it's, it's like, okay, I get it. You know, that's the only connection you have to, our, to me in high school. Fine. Whatever. But it's the, the issue I have with it is that they would continue to do this shit. Where it's like, they would come in two months later, and they'd be like, Dude, remember the time you cut off? And I'm like, yes, we just talked about this, Harold. Like, fucking a couple months ago. Of course I fucking remember. And that's the part that I hate. That's the reason. That is the only regret I have for making that up, is that, holy shit, people will not let it the fuck go. I'm just like, it's all they fucking talk about. I haven't heard anyone reference it in a few years. So, or I'm sorry, maybe like a year, nobody's referenced it, so... I get that going for me, but it's at the same time, I'm just like, holy shit. You guys need something new to talk about. I wish they would... I wish I could skip through these events. I get it. Lights are going to go off. Yep. So that's my uh, story of how I pretend I got three of my hands... Or three of my fingers cut off. If you have any questions, because I was half paying attention to that story as I was telling it. If you have any questions or any comments or about that, please ask them. Uh, I will openly answer any of them. Uh, let me think of another story. Um, 
I think I thought I had something that happened recently. Um, uh, I don't know if I told this one. This is actually fairly recent. It's kind of a developed story. As if I did tell it, there's more to it now. So there was, um, I had a shitty customer the other day. Uh, not the other day, I'm sorry. It was like a month ago. And, um, basically it was just, uh, it was just a really complaining old man. Actually, let me, let me save this one because we're about to end the battle. This will finish you! That was a, this was a closer match than it should have been. It should not have been down to one monster versus one attacking the symbols. Although she made some questionable moves trying to get to my symbol. symbol. You lose. What? No way! Also, fuck that car. In the middle of the map. And apparently the snow stopped and the void opened up behind us. Dun, 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 dun. Oh no! I lost! Still, I had a lot of fun! How about you, Yugi? Did you have a good time? Yes, it was. Was it as good for you as it was for me? <laughs> Thanks. Uh, um, Yugi? What is it, Taya? Well, good luck in the rest of the tournament. Thank you! That was really weird and awkward. Bam, got a lot of XP for Fire Reaper. Not that I really need it, but I'll take it. I don't believe anyone else got XP in this fight for finishing it because everyone else died. <laughs> that was more gritty of a fight than it should have been. Yeah, yeah. Well, my symbol level's up still, so that's good. All right, we want Skalangel. He was MVP. Um, let me check the capability. Let's see, you got one kill. Uh, you got two kills. Sure, I'll go with you. Not really interested, if I'm being honest. Does not concern me. So, I'll probably do the surrender glitch. Someone also said in the comments or Discord somewhere that, um, that they don't... Oh, I saved over my last file. I hope this recording goes okay now. That was stupid of me. Um, fuck, that was really dumb. That can backfire. Um... So yeah, hopefully, um, I don't know, someone said that they don't care if I surrender <clears throat> to re to heal my monsters, it's barely a glitch. All it does is, I mean, we're, basically it just saves us the time, because if I fought them without doing the surrender thing, then I would probably have to surrender anyway, because I would probably lose, because I wouldn't have my best monsters, so, I don't know. It always weirds me that Grandpa Moto looks like he's like all legs. In my head, his waist is where the top of the pants are, so it just it looks like he's just giant legs. I don't know if you're gonna be able to unsee that now, and I'm sorry for that. So I don't know what the level of uh, forest is on these fields, but I do like this field a lot. So the the way this one works is I that when you I'm gonna skip this game and start it again. But the way that this uh, field works is that every time you jump on a pad, it changes all of the platforms next to it, I think. And they rotate between fire and uh, forest. My only issue with this field is I wish they had four types instead of two. I think that would have uh, varied it up a little bit. So yeah, I so I think to turn Larva Moth into Great Moth, I think you need 30 wood. And I don't know how much wood is on that particular... Uh, field. Uh, I should mention, if I'm going for a symbol victory, like if I do try and kill a symbol, I gotta be real careful because I got I have to get one of his pieces. I won't say which one. Um, but there's one of his pieces that is crucial uh, to my strategy. Alright. Done. Oh. <sighs> And then it'll be cool, because after this, the monster shop will open up some more monsters. I don't think it's got anything really good. I don't think anything... I don't think any of the cool monsters unlock until, uh... What do you call it? Um, uh, once a until Area 3 um, opens up. So, we got some time on our hands. Right, so story time. Look at, look at him. His giant... Fucking barely has a torso because his pants because his legs go all the way up to his nipples, just leg then nipple. 
That's what those pants are. So, yeah, I think it's because he doesn't have like the middle part of most overalls that he looks so fucking weird. In my head, I don't know what the point of this is because the enemy just always chooses attack second so they can choose which side of the field they're on. I guess theoretically, it really doesn't matter on this field like at all. But um, I want to do this one because I want to make sure I get on the wood side so I can um, get Larva Moth out there as soon as possible. And probably Petite Moth. I don't know how, what level Petite Moth is at this point. I think two. I think they need to be three though. All right, we'll use them. We'll use a uh, Karibis. Don't one of you hit level two. Am I crazy? They're about the same XP at this point too. I'll grab both of you, and then Skelengel never killed anyone. Weird. I thought he did. Myra Moth, and then let's get the level two Fire Reaper out there. Fire Limp is our heavy hitter. We can hit fit one more. Let's go with. Um, I have exactly sixty. Okay, good do another fire reaper. That's probably good because there's a there's some good fire fields on here which will strengthen him up. Also I skipped through uh, Grandpa Moto's dialogue because I didn't realize that when I retried it would do that so I'm sorry. Oh, hold on. Shit I don't want to do this. I put my symbol in the wrong spot. In my head the symbol you can place the, monst place the monsters around your symbol. I didn't think that for some reason I was like oh wait shit. Let's do this. Do what you gotta do. I like to think that the game is smart enough to put them in the spots that like work best, but I don't know if it is. Alright. So yeah, if I remember correctly, you, like say for instance you drop on uh, one like one in the middle, then the one northeast, south, and west all change, uh, they all flip to the different one, so if you land on fire, most of the spaces around you will turn to wood. Also, I don't know how good of an idea it was to let him go first. It's time to, how do you say, raise the roof. I feel like they told him to say that because of the pose he was making. And the dub, or the localization team was like, yeah, fuck it, why not? Like, he's also just called Grandpa. So if you'll notice, that particular monster that looks like a weird horn, it is not a horn. That is one of the arms of Exodia. And the only way to get it is to beat Grandpa Moto and uh, steal it from him. So, gotta be very, very sure to get, grab that. Alright, let's look at these first. They are 26, which is not enough to my knowledge, but... The map itself is 22 dark, and then these all give 26, okay. What about these? Nothing? Okay. I think I'll try it anyway, because I don't know exactly how much it is, but... I'll give it a shot. And then, um... Let's get the Fire Reapers summoned quick-like. Shit, I only freed two of my monsters. That's not good. Well, it isn't, it isn't. Because they have mostly forest monsters, it looks like. And that's, uh, that's bad for business here. Yeah, see, so it flips them every time you move on them. I think when I start moving, it'll make most of my area fire. So that'll probably help Fire Reaper a little bit. Alright, moment of truth. Let's see. Can I evolve here? No. Not yet. It has to be 30. That sucks. Okay. Good news is, I can now do this. Power him up right good. And then, take another Fire Reaper out. This is the only one. I guess Petite Moth is too, but I'm not as concerned with him. Start getting Kareeb Orbs. Maybe that's Feralimp. Um... Get you out there. So everyone except Feralimp is going to be summoned. Feralimp is an okay starting monster. But he's kind of... He's not strong enough to make up for his cost, I think. Like, he's he is stronger, which is nice. But he's still like two or three hits from being killed, same as everyone else. No! Ah, Karibo fucking moves way too far. I think the only saving grace here is that I'm on a, a forest floor. Except, I don't think I can move properly to hit that Karibo. He's in the exact, like, annoying spot where I can't quite get to him. I, won't let you I should honestly let his Exodia arm 
kill some of my monsters, because that'll save me some of the trouble of having to level them up. I don't know if he starts off with experience. I don't think he does. I can't check from here. Alright. Well, the good news is, I can deal a hefty hit right here. I guess it doesn't move until you end the turn, which is cool. Yeah, Fire Reaper really putting work in here. Uh, that was a painful attack. Why didn't you hold your arms out that time, Grandpa? Alright. Oh, that sucks. I can't get Kareem on a good spot. What is Exodia's move to and attack diagonal? So he can move here and then attack diagonal. He won't be able to, if he moves here, he also can't get Karibo. I'll move Karibo here. Just to try and get him on the field. Now, unfortunately, I can't really... If I do this, then Karibo will just move forward. This is kind of annoying. I can't really get into a spot where he's safe, except for, like, right here. Um, let's summon Feral before I forget. Let's get Fire Reaper out there. The sooner I get him out of the field, the better. I don't know where Karibo will move, or if he'll just try and attack Fire Reaper. Which he might. Also, fuck the, uh, the auto-placement of this game for putting Karibo back here, which means he has to fucking, like... It's gonna take him two turns just to get her out of here, which is not what I wanted to happen at all. Uh, unless I wait... And honestly, it might be more lucrative just to wait for Feralimp, because then I can get here. But I think I'm gonna get there no matter what, so I'm gonna as well. Just fucking waste the time. Damn it. Alright. Oh, right. So, um... So, a guy came in... Uh, let's just say a month back. I don't know exactly how long. It might have been two months. I can't believe um, you're using all the techniques I taught you against me. You taught young Yugi. I'm Yami Yugi. I'm the Pharaoh. Um... Oh, shit. He went to Fire Reaper. Rebo being a lot more brave than I thought he would be. <clears throat> I wasn't concentrating. Uh, so, happened about a week ago. Or, let's, let's, God damn it, I can't tell these stories. I've forgotten how to tell stories. Oh, he did get an attack on him. I guess I moved into a position where he could already hit me. I wasn't really thinking. Um, oh, he's got a Larvis too. It shouldn't be that much of a problem. So, guy came in, went to, um, he just says, so, for those who don't know, I used to work at a local convenience store where the chain got bought out and we became 7-Eleven. Um, and he, so the guy comes in and he's like, um, you know, everything's gone fucking downhill since you guys turned into 7-Eleven. I was like, oh, okay, you just stepped in the store. I don't, or no, he, he came in and was like, everything's changed since you became 7-Eleven. I don't like it. I'm just like, I, I don't know what to tell you. I, I, I can't call the contractors back in. And, um, he was just like, you know, just, it was so much better back when he was an old store. He was like, I, I can't do anything about it, sorry. He was like, do you guys have coffee? And I said, my favorite line ever, which is, yep, right under that coffee oh. sign. And, um, <laughs> I, just, I fucking love being a smartass with that. It is literally one of the few joys I get in that job, is people asking where coffee is and then pointing to the sign that says coffee. The big sign hanging from the ceiling. Alright, I'm gonna try and sacrifice... Well, not, sacrifice is a strong word, but I want to move Kuribo up anyway. Uh, I don't think he can kill me unless he gets one of his other monsters to hit me. Which would be unfortunate because I'm trying to feed Exodia, not whatever other monsters he's got. And then... My, I guess Fire Reaper looks like he shouldn't be made of glass, but he totally is. Okay, hold on, let's move Kuribo first. So Feralim can move further. Um, yeah, they, they have a decent amount of HP, it's just I think they have, like, no defense. I mean, they're archers, I guess it makes sense. So he goes in, he goes to make coffee, and he's like, you're all out of coffee. And he's like, he poured, he made, like, half a cup. And I just started my shift, so I was like, I was like, oh, I guess the guys before I didn't finish making it, um, I can make you a cup, but it's gonna be five, six minutes. And he was just like, don't worry, I'll just get a cup of milk instead. I was like, okay. In my head, I'm thinking, that's fucking weird. Um, oh, good, he's gonna feed Exodia. No! Ah, oh, damn it. Alright, whatever. Um, and so he goes to get the milk, and he's like, You don't have any milk either! And I was like, Oh, uh, I can change that right now, actually. 
He was like, don't fucking bother. I was like, okay. And he was just like, you know, this story used to be so, un- this shit, or this kind of shit never used to happen when it was, uh, before it was 7-Eleven. And I was like, I've been here for six years. I promise you it did. I've, I've been here. I, I promise you not filling the milk has happened before. And he was like, no, no, it never used to happen before 7-Eleven. I'm like, I just told, so I was just like, all right. Like at this point, internally, I was like, all right, there's no point arguing with him. He just wants to bitch about us being a 7-Eleven now. I'm not going to entertain this. Like, I'm not going to argue with him. I, he just wants to fucking complain. Fine. I don't care enough about this. <laughs> this is not the hill I want to die on. So I was like, all right. And, um, ooh, this works out pretty well, actually. Which one of you? Level 2 is over here. That's level 1. Let's get level 1 some, uh, some experience. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to kill Exodia. Uh, but that's good though, because that means at least if he's destroyed, then that means I'll be able to uh, recruit him. Although that Fire Reaper right there is definitely dead. There's no saving him. No hope. Um, what was I going to say though? So, uh, so he goes, he like, he can't get his milk. He's like, old fuck. I say old, I mean like 60s. Um, and first of all, I should describe this better. He was really like, I just disfigured is the wrong word, but he, I put the controller down to tell that because I was making like a motion with my hand, like, eh, I don't, but you can't see those. So he, um, also so much for not moving Karibo one turn at a time. Also, God damn it. They're so slow. Goddamn cavalry. Um, he was, he was, he was definitely fat, but not like. American morbidly obese, like he was just he had a gut, but what was really fucking weird was that the way he had his pants, he had like they looked like they were so tight that he'd like bust he'd like brought his entire gut like above the waistline. And I know what a muffin top is. It wasn't a muffin top. It was like the next stage of muffin top. It was like a lopsided muffin, where it was like there was definitely a cutoff at like the pant line. I don't know how fucking tight his pants must have been, but it looked painful. And it's just like, it, it was almost like a, but it was, it like didn't go up either. So it just looked like this like little blob that like was in the bottom half of his stomach that didn't hang over, or that hung over. It was really fucking weird. And I was like, there must be something wrong with him for that to be like that. Like that's not how the human body like looks. <laughs> so I was worried for the man. And um, I was like, this is just, that's not normal. Uh, anyway. So he kept complaining. Uh. And I forget what he said after that. Oh no, he went to get one of our bakery stuff, and this was at like 11 o'clock at night, or like 11:30. So it just started uh, my shift, and he goes, um, "Oh sweet, one hit KO, absolutely." I want to go for the other one, just because I can probably. Yeah, let's go for this one. So I might be able to. Let me see first. I think for Fairlimp to target him, I think Fairlimp. Has to be where this petite moth is. Let me see. Oh no, right there, perfect. So I gotta move Kareem's. Kareem's Abdul Jabbar. I made that joke. Shit. Fucking recycling jokes. Um. So he. He came in, or no, he um. So he went to get a coffee roll, which is just like you know, like a cinnamon button fucking thing or something like that. And um. I didn't really care. Like I was just kind of like, I was just like, all right. And, um, he, so he went to grab one of those, and he's like, I don't even know why I'm grabbing this. He's just going to throw it out in a couple hours. I'm like, that's how Fresh Bakery works. You happen to come at the end of the day, but we do have to change them for new ones. That's, like, I didn't say this, but I'm just like, obviously, like, like it's not my issue. And, um, it's like, I'm just doing my fucking job. And he goes, um, so he, he grabs two of them. He takes a bite out of one as he's walking, which, this isn't, it's not against the rules, but it's my biggest fucking pet peeve, is the people who, like, will eat food in the store before they pay a, pay for it, like, they'll open a bag of chips, or they'll, like, break open the water, I'm like, it takes you ten seconds to go buy that shit and get out, there's no line, you're the only one in the store, I hate this shit, I really do, it's my biggest pet peeve, I used to work at a grocery store when I was a kid, and I hated them too, I'm just like, how the f- can you not stop stuffing your fucking face? For like 10 seconds. It's not even that. It's like the people. It's like sometimes runners will come in. I'm not. I'm sorry. Runners is a little more excusable because they obviously just ran and they like. 
Um, they'll grab like a bottle of water or something and they'll just like open. I'm like, okay, I, I kind of get that. But it's the people who come in and they're like, um, they're just like coming in, from, you know, just from like hanging out or something and they open like a Gatorade or something and drink it. Like, as I'm like, just fucking pay for it first. It's just like, I don't know if your car is not going to go through or some bullshit. Like, just don't put me through this. And, um, anyway, so he gets to the, uh, he gets to the counter and, um, he starts, he wants to pay for his stuff. And, uh, I say, I forget what it, I was just like, it's, so we had a deal for the coffee rolls and our apple fritters because they're normally like slightly more expensive ones than the regular donuts. And, um, it's supposed to be two for two. So I said it for, yeah, I think it's two for two twenty two. And I said something like, no, it's either, I think it might've been two for two. Yeah. So it was two for two, and I was, and I said it was like, oh, it's like two thirty or two fifteen or whatever it was. And he's like, I thought it was supposed to be two for two. And I was like, there's tax on prepared foods. Uh, and he was like, this never would have happened at the other store. I'm like, we didn't even have. I actually said this out loud. And it's like, you know, this wouldn't have happened at the old store. He kept saying it. And I was like, the Seven Eleven is bullshit and all that. I'm like, we didn't even have bakery in our old store. We have the bakery because of Seven Eleven. And he was like, well, it doesn't, re you know, whatever. It's shitty anyway. I'm like, you're still buying it, like. And he was, just, so he goes, he grabs two singles and he, um, and you know, it's, there's still change. He's like, you're really not going to make you pay more than $2 for this. I'm like, like, yes, that's, <laughs> that's the price. And he was just like, I wasn't that like frustrated in my head. I am, but I, I, I was like, yes, that's the price. And he was like, you know, so he goes through his wallet, he grabs a five and says, you're really going to make me break a fuck, a fucking five for this. And in my head, and not even in my, and I just said like, yes, sorry, that's the price. But in my head, I'm like, it's a fucking five. Who tries to not break a $5 bill? That's what they're for. And he's just like, then forget it. I don't even want it. He fucking threw the coffee rolls onto the like counter. And I was just like, um, cause, or no, he said first, before he started paying for it, he said like, you're really going to make me pay for these at all. You know, you're just going to throw them on a couple hours. I'm like, well, before we swap out the new ones, yes, you do have to pay for them. This is a store. I said that to him. And he, um, so he threw him on the counter and he left his $2 that he placed down. So he starts to walk out and it starts to wobble out, I should say. And I said, sir, you forgot your singles. And he, I hold him up and he rips him from my hand. He walks out. And I was like, all right, cool. And, or no, I think, and then I think he said, as he was like walking out, I think he said, um, you know, I'm a regular here. You know, I'm going to complain to the manager and, you know, about this kind of shit. And it's like, okay. Complain to the manager that you couldn't pay for your food, or that you had to pay for your food. Sure, it'll go over well. And he was like, you know, whatever. And he like walked out. I was like, that was fucking weird. And um, there's a follow-up story about him, so I'm gonna have to do another match just so I can tell it. Because <laughs> he came back. There is a return of this. I lose, but you held your own extremely well. <laughs> but don't let your guard down. The path ahead of you is still long and very competitive. I know, but I promise to defeat my opponents and win the tournament. I'll hold you to your promise, Yugi. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks, Jeepa. Thanks, Gam Gam. Fire Reaper level 3. I don't think Fire Reaper turns into anything, but that's a decent monster for now. So I'll take I'll keep using it. Oh shit, I wanted to level the other one up to level 2. I messed this up. I messed that up. Actually, he might level up on his own. Was he at 78? We got 28 XP. Yeah. Good, good, good. I'll take that then. That was still okay. Now, my symbol doesn't affect him, so that sucks. Definitely gonna get Exodia. I don't know what else to take from him. Oh, it was Cockroach Knight. It wasn't Larvis. Um, it's kind of a heavy hitter, but he didn't really get any XP. He did that... I think that's the only one that got a kill. He got a lot of XP somehow. I think he might have already started with some. I'll grab it just in case. Who cares? I have way too many petite mods now. Save game data? Yes. And then... Save over this one this time. Not that it matters. I already fucked up the files. Alright. I mean, I appreciate them letting me save after every, like, half-hour battle, so I get it. But at the same time, like, damn it. <laughs> Also, this logo, I pointed at it, you can't see. Uh, the Capsule Monster Coliseum logo in the bottom left. 
I try and put that on the thumbnails, but it looks really weird in thumbnails. And I think I might start using the Castle Monster logo from like the anime, just because it looks a little cleaner. So if you see a difference in the thumbnail, that's why. This doesn't look as good in my opinion. Let me double check. So I, I want to see if you can fight anyway. Yes, okay, so let's just choose from the five you want to fight. Uh, we're going to go to Weevil first for a magical miracle. And then we're going to go here. And then we're going to go... Rex, you know, we'll just go in regular order, I guess. So this is where we start getting um, back into the, uh, you know, the real duelists, quote unquote. I don't know why Mokuba's there, and only on stage two. This is Capsa Monster. This is his fucking jam. Literally in the in the manga, Mokuba was shit at dual monsters, but he was amazing at Capsa Monsters. You're off to a great start. Yes, I won a few battles and accumulated monster points. True, I've gathered a bunch of new monsters for you. Hmm, before I forget, I have to tell you that the monsters you can get from me won't always be the same. I recommend examining the monsters closely. Okay, so which monsters should I get? What's the fun in telling you everything? Check them out for yourself! <laughs> oh, one more f If you have monsters you no longer you can exchange them for monster point. Oh, that's kind of cool. And I didn't realize you could sell them. I don't think that's really necessary, though. What you should you have like more than enough do? monster points uh, the normal way. Alright, he had a time wizard. That's pretty cool. You gotta grab ourselves a time wizard. Time wizard! Kunai with chain! Prisman, I, I like the design of but he's kind of a shit card. Being reflection number two. Do I already have this one? I don't remember which leg I have. I'm gonna buy it anyway. Another fair limb. Hell yes, Summon Skull. I didn't realize you get him this early. Absolutely. Um, we're good on those. Actually, I should check the uh, the fusion guide. I think it works the same way it works in the main game. So Flame Manipulator works. Baby, baby Dragon. Needle Worm doesn't filter into the Grape Moth Saga. Um, moving then Gear Golem, the Moving Fortress this. Uh, I think I had it up somewhere. So, monster. Oh, let's see him. Uh, game facts. Cheats. They have a nice little list here. Flame Swordsman is Flame Manipulator and mocks Masaki the Legendary Swordsman. They both be a level 4, and truth be told, I'm not going to bother with that. Um... Let's see what else we got here. Um, none of these look that good. Time Wizard has to be level 3. Baby Dragon has to be level 5. That's kind of annoying. It says Crow Goblin. You must have ten, less than 10 wind monsters after Area 1. And I did finish Area 1 and Crow Goblin is not here. Which... Makes me slightly annoyed. I don't think I had 10 wind monsters. I don't think I had any wind monsters, to be honest. Um, well, we'll look at it. Right. And then buy these four. What would you like to do? I would like to edit my deck. Start taking out the garbage, the garbage, if you will. All right. So yeah, maybe Dragon Level Five is think what holds me back there. I don't really want to put in the work for that. All right, let's take Root Water out for Time Wizard. Hannibal out for Leg of Exodia. Firegrass out for Summon Skull. Psychic Cap out for Baby Dragon. I mean, I know some of these can still evolve and stuff, but I don't really plan on using them if I'm um, being honest. Let's fucking put some of these back. I don't remember which Petite Moth is, like, important or not. That one's level 2. This one is... I'm gonna put it back. Or I'll save that one just in case, but... I'm just gonna put it in an empty spot. This one, I'm just gonna put it in an empty spot. Now, the Steel Scorpions are unique, so 18 experience. I can still feasibly level these to 3. Like, that's not that much of a stretch. Um, but... I don't know. These are still dead. I definitely need to uh, surrender to get those back. Um, 
Wish I could like sort these somehow, like make them cleaner, but that's fine. Um, okay, so actually I might be able to do that. Let's put Larvis back, right arm back. Um, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so we'll grab Exodus. All right, so we have three parts of Exodia. This one's level two. I need to get these two to level two. Uh, this one can move diagonally three and can attack one, which is annoying. This one can move two and attack diagonally two, which is okay. Oh, wait, hold on. So this has the opposite of this one, which wasn't that hard to use. So surely it can't be that difficult. Um, summon Skull two and two. Moves the same way as Fire Reaper. Uh... He looks like he's a significantly more attack and monster points than any of the other ones. I'll probably stop using Feral Imp and start using Summon Skull instead. I don't like that they have the uh, the newer artwork for Summon Skull. I don't like this one as much. The Archfiend artwork. I like the um, the OG one. Alright, we're in an hour. I'll finish this uh, old man story in the development. Because I know you, you, you await it with such vigor and passion. I will get to it. So thank you guys for watching and tune in for the next one. Um... Actually, yeah, tune in for the next one. Uh, I'll make the next one start off with a bang, though.